Brief History of Barangay Kalbayog, Malilapat, Albay Researched by, Quirino Volante Year, 2008 Edited and continued by architect Gerald Volante Barangay Kalbayog is situated at the inner portion of the municipality of Malilapat in the province of Albay is surrounded by two rivers, Ogab and Gulawan along with the largest mountain ranges of Malilapat and Mount Mayan Volcano. Its boundaries are as follows, along the north, Barangay Ikanawe and its highest mountain of Bulakawan. In the south is the river of Nagtagdo which separates Barangays San Roque and Sitio Cabogao. In the west is the Mount Mayan Volcano. In the east portion is the largest mountain ranges of Kalbayog of about seven mountains. Barangay Kalbayog has many sitios, which divided the barangay into parts. This is as follows, Tinabacoan, sitio in the northern portion from the peak of Mount Mayon down to its lower portion. Sitio Mina Dila, a portion on the northeast of barangay. Sitio Magaho is at the west and Sitio Tactican at the mountain ranges. These sitios are agricultural land which people plants crops and raised farm animals. Mount Mayon Volcano is blessing by nature, due to its majestic view, and to the fertile land, ideal for farming and animal production, however, this is also a treat to life and livelihood of the barangay, as volcanic eruption cannot be exactly predicted. The name of the barangay was quite legendary in nature, but its existence was not. Name originated in the Spanish period. It was from Spanish missionaries who are evangelizers of Catholic faith. They had reached this place and they were very tired of going up here. While they were walking they had encountered many natives and said that this place is like the mountain of Calvario or Calvary where Jesus was crucified. They had to go back to the mainland of municipality and they were asked where they had gone they would say that they come from Calvario. Through oral transition or oral tradition, the name Calbario was changed into Calbayog as native said. Barangay in the pre-Spanish era has bountiful resources. It is governed by big families and different familiar hierarchy. The kind of living they have is probably dependent upon agriculture. The barter system is also noted, the exchange of goods to service or goods to goods. Beliefs of the people was centered at the forces of nature and other supernatural powers. Livelihood is the priority in the life of early natives. Houses are made of native materials and native construction following the concept of a Bahe Kubo that varies in sizes depending on the size of the family or clan. 1860, Calbayog was just a sitio of Barangay San Jose with only seven big families and seven houses recorded living in the place. In the year 1890, Calbayog has become a part of San Roque which has developed first to become a barangay from San Jose. In the year 1915, Calbayog has become independent to San Roque and established to become a barangay. In the Spanish era, the barangay has evangelized by the Catholic religion, consequently from the other barangay of the municipality, the Roman Catholic Church assigned, Senior San Vicente Ferrer as the patron saint of the barangay which feast and festivity are honored for the saint. The introduction of the Spaniards of Abaca fiber industry was one of the biggest livelihood changer for the natives, since they are dependent only in agriculture or farming. This has brought a very big change in the lives of the native. The Abaca industry, the Abaca plantation and the Paglabid as the main livelihood. It is the version of the Industrial Revolution in the Barangay, the introduction of machines such as the Bilingan, Habilan, Hagoten and other machines used in the Abaca industry. The presence of Chinese businessman or Chinese immigrant has also brought big impact to the livelihood of the people. The introduction of the entrepreneurial skill of these Chinese has been a part of the Barangay way of life. In the American era, the introduction of education has brought the biggest change in the native, as part of American priority to educate Filipino natives and the introduction of English language by Thomasites teachers all over the Philippine archipelago. Kind education in this era was much simpler. A student or a pupil reaches in their sixth grade and can speak English and understand basic education they can already teach. 
Classroom on that time is in the lower part of the biggest houses in the barangay. It is noted that the first classroom was the the house of Timoteo Benitez clan, situated at the Puroc 4. It was considered as the primary level of education with Jovito Bitantes as the first noted teacher to teach the native of Calbayog. They have finished the primary primary level, they have to go to the lower barangay or at the town proper to continue higher education. At the time of World War there were no recorded involvement for revolution but there were natives who become soldiers or guerrillas in the World War II. Major development in infrastructure and basic facilities was also introduced to the barangay. Introduction or the construction of road in the year 1964 and the realization of electricity in the year 1986. Those developments had brought change and impact to the place. In the years of 1980s numbers of professional has been recorded to be a product of the barangay. Development of the barangay has been prospered through the years. Barangay in the presence of the Tinian del Barrio started after the liberation from the Japanese succeeding the historical Cabeza de Barangay or Barrio Lieutenant, the first to become Tinian del Barrio was in the name of Justino Baisa in the year 1947 to 1949 and 1949 to 1951 served in two terms. Second is Julio Binas in the year 1951 to 1953, Third is Mariano Volante, in the year 1953 to 1955, served also in two terms from 1955 to 1957. Fourth is Juan Volante, in the year 1957 to 1959. Fifth is Isaac Badera, in the year 1959 to 1961. Sixth is Jacinto Bailolo, in 1961 to 1963. Last to be elected as Tiniant del Barrio was Ulpiano Binos, grandson of the former Tinian Julio Binas, in the year 1963 to 1965. Tinian del Barrio served the Barangay in every two years term. Barangay captain started in the year 1965. First to be named as Barangay captain was Ulpiano Binos, his second term after being Tinian del Tinian del Barrio, he was honored to be the last Tinient del Barrio and to be the first barangay captain of Calbayog up to 1968. Second to be named as barangay captain is Ignacio Biglan a son of Chinese ancestors from 1968 to 1994 he was the longest in position as barangay captain due to the proclamation of President Ferdinand Edrilan Marcos of martial law. He is in position with two terms before martial law was proclaimed. Ignacio Biglan was considered as the longest ruling barangay captain by records. The enactment of Batas Pambansa 222 or the Barangay Election Act of 1982 on May 17, 1982, Ignacio Biglan retains his power over the barangay until the end of Marcos' regime in 1986. Establishment of the act make the barangay captain full autonomy of governing the barangay from development projects and improvement of people well-being. After martial law is the introduction of officer in charge or OIC then all piano binos again to became OIC for 11 months or almost one year. Third to be named as barangay captain was Juan Bursa's brother-in-law of Ignacio Biglan of Chinese ancestors ruled as barangay captain in 1995 to 1999. His term the establishment of a barangay hall as center for Sanguniang barangay meetings and barangay assemblies was erected on the elementary school compound and he has also started the construction of the barangay road. Fourth to be in position is Kirina Volante, a grandson of the former Tinian del Barrio, Juan Volante in the year 1999 up to 2004, in this term he prioritized the barangay road development. So to foster sportsmanship and give leisure to the youth the construction of the first basketball court was built together with the Sanguniang Cabaton at Elementary Compound that caters youth sports enthusiasts. First street light system was also introduced on this term. In the election of 2004 Kirina Volante lost the election with Juan Versus, Juan Versus ruled until 2007, various road development was prioritized and the construction of spillways to the Bulawan River was realized. 2007 election, Kirina Volante regained the power from Juan Versus until 2010, during this term notable infrastructure project was realized. The construction of the first metal hanging bridge replacing the spillways makes the local accessible during flooding and rainy seasons. 
Construction of the first aid care center was also realized in this term, this to cater the preschooler of the barangay with aid from the Department of Social Welfare and Development Authority. One of the major infrastructure projects completed during this term was the prioritization of the first barangay water system. This gives the local the access to potable drinking water and for sanitary use. Moving the long hours of fetching water for laundry and sanitary use. This improve health and well-being of the people. In the election of 2010 new barangay captain in the name of Gilberto Bolanos, a member of the prominent family, an incumbent Sanguniang barangay council and spouse to the daughter of former barangay captain Juan Bursas gained the trust over the barangay, serving three terms. Notable infrastructure project was the relocation of the Barangay Hall from the Calbayog Elementary Compound to center portion of the Barangay situated in Barangay 3, adjacent to the chapel of the Roman Catholic Church. Various Barangay road development projects was also noted, such as the roads and pathways leading to neighborhood on each Kurok, the improvement of the health centers, and the introduction of the Barangay CCTV cameras and the entry of telecommunications towers was also noted. During this term, the construction of the mountain ranges road development was also allowed, lifting the status of Mount Bulacawan and Mount Toktakan from a highly protected forest reserved into ecotourism development for Kalbayog and the municipality. Reconstruction of the bridge was also noted after the destruction of floods brought by Typhoon Reaming. Audio recording started, 6.10 p.m., Thursday, November 30, 2023.